you ever think about what's in a wheel cylinder? Um, this wheel cylinder came out of that 52 Chevy. And it was frozen. As you can imagine, the car had been sitting 20 plus years. But let's see what was actually inside. It's very simple. There is two steel pistons that connect to your brake shoes. And then there's two rubber cups that sit like this. The fluid comes in through here, goes into the cylinder and squeezes outward. Comes in right in the middle where this spring is. So it's like this inside the mount, inside the wheel cylinder. And it squeezes outwards. When the, the uh, piston comes out, it pushes up uh, out to the left and right and activates the brakes, the brake shoes, which push against the brake drum. The spring is here to keep the pistons at their widest point. Why do you need that? Because you don't want um, the brakes to retract and push way back into the piston. This is the inside of the brake cylinder. This is where all the action happens. So all of this is inside of there. It's imperative that the inside of this brake cylinder be smooth so that these rubber cups right here have a good surface to ride on and conceal. When a brake cylinder gets old and worn, it gets rusted inside. And I think you can see the rust there, and especially here. In the very middle, it's not so rusty. Um, in this case, not so rusty because there was still some decent brake fluid in it, but the ends, it had sat so long, the ends had fused right to the ends of the, the uh, wheel cylinder. Also, check this out, look at the spring. So the spring has to have a nice edge in order to push on the rubber cup effectively. Look at one of the edges is completely rusted away, completely rusted away. So that was a failure point. Obviously these being seized to the inside of the cylinder was a failure point, but you can rebuild these. And when you re rebuild them, you get new cups, new rubber cups, and oftentimes a new spring with its end pieces. You have to reuse these, clean them up and reuse them. Um, it's, it's the rebuild's not gonna work if this is very scored inside. I don't know that I could save this one, um, but what you'd have to do is clean it up carefully with a brake hone in order to, to try to smooth out some of that rust. The last piece is the brake bleeder. That's this. This is how you get air out of the system but let me show you how that works. The brake bleeder will have a hole in it. See that hole? And when you loosen either the entire bleeder in some cars, or in, in the case of this car, just this, this other cap up here, this thing, air comes out so that you can bleed the brakes. This one, another indication that it was ready to fail or failing is the dirt inside here. This is all supposed to be very, very clean. It's your brakes you're talking about. And look at that. It's caked with corrosion and, and dirt. Where does all this come from? Well, brake fluid attracts water. And even in a sealed system over time, um, it's going to get wet. 
the water comes, the moisture comes right through here, right past this piston and fuses the piston to the side of the brake cylinder. And the moisture continues to travel in, create the, the fluid breaks down. Brake fluid does not last forever. The fluid breaks down and you have the situation you have here. This is very, very common on old cars that have been sitting. Very, very common. Luckily, brake cylinders for most cars are still made, and the ones that aren't, you can get the rebuild kits to rebuild. So hopefully this was helpful to you to see what's inside of a brake cylinder. Old cars that don't have disc brakes have these on all four wheels. It's a drum brake disc uh, wheel cylinder. And of course, the brake line, or in the case of the front, the brake hose goes in there. So hopefully this was useful and you now understand what is inside the brake cylinder and how you would rebuild it if you ever need to. Thanks for watching.